ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد we all believe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created three intelligent beings other than the animals or other than the other matter and non-living things that we see around us allah has created these three beings and they are the angels and the jinns and human beings we all believe this and whenever we say the word angel the idea that comes to our minds is beings who are worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beings who are so noble that they are constantly spending their lives in Allah's worship this is the idea that comes to our mind and unfortunately in our times we see that there is a very different perception of the angels that is usually shown and that is a creature most in in a lot of depiction that is feminine in nature that has a halo on its head and wings this is not the conception of islam we don't know how their exact physical form is but we believe in it that they are the, from the most beautiful creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now this is with regards to the angels when we say human beings we see human beings around us so there is no need of us to imagine anything in our minds but when we say the word jinn suddenly spooky stories come to our minds suddenly we start thinking of people who are possessed we start thinking of haunted houses we start thinking of masajid that ha- that are haunted and things of this nature but subhanallah have we ever stopped to look at what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in his book it is very interesting that in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the incident in two places of the muslim jinns and there is a lot of superstition that is surrounding this matter so inshallah ta'ala i want us in today's khutbah to gain some lessons from a particular surah of the quran the 72nd surah of the quran called surah jinn and unfortunately because of so much superstition you hear people saying that oh do not recite this surah at this time of the day or the night and do not do this do not do that subhanallah this has absolutely no basis in our religion that we have reduced the kalam of allah we have reduced the a surah a mubarak surah that is part of the quran we reduced it to superstitions subhanallah So it is my intention inshallah today that we try to gain some gems that is contained in this surah and what it was that happened with these jinns that Allah decided to make it a part of the Quran. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu tells us as is recorded in Sahih Bukhari that once the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went out of Makkah with a group of his companions he was headed for the marketplace of Uqtal and then the time of fajr came upon them so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started the fajr prayer and as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reciting the quran a group of jinn that is flying by or that is passing by they stop dead in their tracks they are suddenly dumbstruck they are baffled with what they hear 
and it is this reaction after the recitation had concluded of the Prophet وسلم, this reaction that the jinn had, this conversation that they had, that Allah decided to make it a part of his book. So incredible was this discussion that they had, Allah decided that we shall recite it till the day of judgment. So let us take a look at what happened. Allah begins the surah by saying, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أوحي إلي أنه استمع نفر من الجن فقالوا إنا سمعنا قرآنا عجبا Allah says to the Prophet وسلم, that declare, announce that it has been revealed to me that a group of the jinn had istama'a the Qur'an. Now Allah did not say that they had sami'a nafaru min al-jinn, that they heard the Qur'an. Allah says istama'a nafaru min al-jinn, that these were a group of the jinn who heard the Qur'an in a manner that they were completely paying attention to it. They were attentive, they were focused on the recitation of the Prophet And now we need to ask ourselves, when the Qur'an is recited, when we hear the Qur'an, what is the effect that it has on us? Do we stop to listen to it carefully? Or do we just take it as something that's just mere sounds and then the melody and the qira'ah of the shaykh, mashallah, is very nice and that's it, we turn it off. These jinns, they heard it attentively attentively and then they said indeed we have heard a Quran that is ajaba. for a lot of Urdu speakers or those who speak Hindi or Urdu the word ajib has a very negative meaning to it ajib means in Urdu something that's very unusual something that is weird strange but this is not the meaning in Arabic the meaning in Arabic is something that is so spellbinding, something that basically blows your mind away. It is so awesome. This is what Ajaban means. And this is what these jinns describe the Qur'an as. SubhanAllah. They, don't, they did not think that the Qur'an is just some recitation, some recital that they heard at random. But rather they said this is Qur'an and Ajaba. Yahdi ila rushdi fa'amannabi. Verse number two continues, and this is a discussion that Allah wants you and me to pay attention to and gain lessons from. Yahdi ila rushd, they say, these jinns after hearing the Quran, they say that this book guides to rushd. And rushd means not just something that is good, but rushd has many meanings to it. From the meanings of rushd is something that guides to piety make someone pious. Something that causes a person to lead a righteous life. Shaykh As-Sa'di says that rushd means all the good things that cause a person to live a righteous life. So they're saying this Qur'an, this thing that we've heard, يَهْدِي إِلَى رُشْدِ فَآمَنَّابِ And we have brought Iman upon it. We have believed in it. يَهْدِي إِلَى رُشْدِ فَآمَنَّابِ وَلَمْ نُشْرِكَ بِرَبِّنَا أَحَدًا And immediately from this, Verse we learn that these jinns were not Muslims. These jinns were rather pagans. They were polytheists. They were mushrikeen jinn. They say that this book guides to all that is right, that causes a person to lead a righteous life. And we have brought iman upon it. We have believed in it. And then on top of that, they say, We shall never ever commit shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That one exposure to the Qur'an, dear brothers and sisters, one exposure to the Qur'an washed away the shit that was in their hearts. And then it is difficult for us to appreciate the Arabic here, the lam, the noon, the, the shadda, they are saying, we shall never, ever, ever commit any shit with Allah. So in other words, they are expressing regret. They are expressing remorse that, oh my God, we were so misguided. We were in misguidance before this. And now we have been guided. Because let us think about our own selves. In last week's khutbah, we learned about having a connection with the Qur'an. In last week's khutbah, we talked about how the Qur'an is a communication, not to all of humanity, which of course it is, but a communication to me and you, your line of communication to Allah. 
So let us look back. Do we have any regrets for not being that practicing? For those who are older in the crowd, three decades ago, four decades ago, how is your life and how is your life today? For those who are young, let us think into our, let us look back, let us have a self-reflection. Think how was our relationship with Allah five years ago? How was it last year? How was it last week? Am I coming closer to Allah? These jinns had this regret that now that we've gotten this guidance, we're not going to go back to misguidance. So when the Qur'an is recited to us, do we have the same attitude? That now that we know the truth, the things, the guidance that's contained in the Qur'an, do we just leave it to the side? That I will just follow whatever I desire? And then they say, وَأَنَّهُ تَعَالَى جَدُّ رَبِّنَا مَتَّخَذَ صَاحِبَةً وَلَا وَلَدًا the next verse, verse number three, continues. They say that this book teaches the exalted nobility of our Lord. That this book is teaching how high above Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah has not taken for himself a wife or a son. And then this also tells us that from their group, there might have been those jinns who were exposed to Christian teachings, the Trinity, or things of this nature. So they said, no, this cannot be the case. That God, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken a wife or a son for himself. But then the question is, how were they even exposed to this? Who exposed them to these teachings? Verse number four tells us. They say, and the biggest fool from amongst us, he had been speaking evil and vile things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is the big fool that they're referring to? Iblis himself. That a few moments ago, before being exposed to the recitation of the Qur'an, Iblis is their ringleader, is their boss. But now, after having been exposed to the guidance of the Qur'an, he has now become the biggest fool for them. They say that the biggest fool from amongst us, وَأَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ سَفِيهُنَا عَلَى اللَّهِ شَفَطَ وَأَنَّا وَلَنَّا أَلَّمْ تَقُولَ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنُّ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا And then they even continue, the jinns, they know that human beings have been blessed above them. The jinns know this, and there are many proofs for this. From the proofs that human beings are superior to the jinn is something that's mentioned in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Isra, Surah 17, verse 70, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That indeed we have honored the children of Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Baqarah, Surah 2, verse 31, that وَعَلَّمَا آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah taught Adam the names of everything. Allah taught Adam the names and gave him the knowledge. And scholars of Tafsir mentioned that from this, from the names of everything means there was a mother language, a language from which all vocabulary, all language came forth. So the jinns are aware of this. In Surah Rahman, Surah 55, verse 4, what does Allah say? Your favorite Surah, Surah Rahman, Our Rahman, Allah al Quran, Khalaq al Insan, Allah al Bayan. Allah is the one who taught mankind eloquence. So the jinn knew this that mankind has been blessed above them in terms of knowledge, in terms of eloquence, in terms of intellect, in terms of intelligence. So they thought to themselves that, okay, this big fool that we have from amongst us, he was the one telling us about shirk and to commit shirk with Allah. Let's go and see what these human beings are up to. Let's go and check out what the human beings are doing. So then they go and they see human beings committing shirk as well. They see human beings going to other than Allah to ask for their needs. So then they thought to themselves that this must be the right thing to do. And this should sound familiar to us. How many are us? How many are the people amongst us who when they see that something everyone is doing, they think to themselves, this, this has got to be right. Everybody is doing this. Everybody's taking a credit card and swiping it left, right, center and going into riba-based loans and loans there and never paying off their credit cards. But that's okay. Everyone's doing that. So I might as well do the same thing. People keeping their money in banks and trying to get interest out of it, live their life upon interest. So the point is these jinns themselves understood that what everybody around you does is not necessarily a proof that that thing is right. And that's why they say, they, they, they express this. We could never have fathomed, we could never have imagined that human beings and the jinn could concoct a lie against Allah. 
SubhanAllah, think about this. They are saying, we could have never thought that you human beings, you who are better than us in terms of your intelligence, you're going to do these filthy actions? Something for us to think about. And then the, verse, the next verse tells us something else that they remarked. They say, They say, and there are a group of men from amongst human beings who try to get help and seek their needs from the men from amongst jinn. فَزَادُهُمْ And this caused them nothing but increase in misguidance. This caused them to increase in rahaqa, more and more in misguidance. This is what happened to them. This is something that the jinns understood. They said that you human beings are better than us. You must be really dumb. You must be really silly to leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek refuge in Allah, to ask Allah for your needs, and you're asking the needs of the jinn. And then they say that we thought the disbelievers amongst human beings in jinn's thought that Allah will never send any messenger. He will never send any messenger for the guidance of humanity and for their guidance. And then they continue and then they say, And now they say that we have tried to reach the boundaries of the skies. Like you and I know, the jinns, they can fly to faraway places. In the blink of an eye, they're in Arabia. In another blink of an eye, they're in Canada. In another blink of an eye, they're in another land. Vast distances they travel in the split of a second. So they say that we have tried to We've tried to lams means touch. They're trying to reach the skies to do what? To steal a hearing. But we found the skies under heavy security. They say we found the skies under heavy security by guardian angels and, a f and flames, burning flames waiting for us. Remember in the beginning I mentioned the uh, quote of Abdullah ibn Abbas? Well here, this quote, I'll elaborate upon that quote. The hadith or the narration in Sahih Bukhari continues. Abdullah ibn Abbas anhu says, when the Prophet وسلم, was praying the Salat of Fajr with his companions outside of Makkah, this was at a time when the shayateen, jinns, could not steal any hearing from the heavens. They found the, hear the, they found the skies under a lockdown. The skies are shut off, restricted airspace. Nothing. They cannot get any hearing from there. So these shayateen jinn came to their people and their people said to them, what is wrong with you? How come you didn't bring any news from heaven? How come you didn't steal from the conversation of the angels? And these shayateen jinn said to their masters or their people that we suddenly found the skies as out of, as off limits. It, it, we can't access anything. So their own shayateen jinn said, that verily something major has occurred. So therefore go in the east and the west and find out what is it that is causing us not to be able to hear from the skies anymore. What is it that is causing these guardian angels to be there? And this was when these jinns, they basically were navigating the length and breadth of the planet. And they came across the Prophet ﷺ and they heard his recitation. So that's why they're saying over here that we tried to reach the skies, but we found the skies in a complete lockdown. We couldn't hear anything. They say, but now in those positions of hearing where we used to sit, where we used to hang out, where we used to chill out with our buddies, trying to hear on the conversation of the angels in the lowest heavens, we're not able to do that. Rather, if someone from an if someone tries to do that now, he will find a burning flame waiting in ambush for him. And this they completely understood. And they were wondering why this is happening. And they were asking themselves, what could cause this? And so they come back to earth. They come back to earth and then they start wondering that the skies are shut down. It's completely cordon off. There must be something that has happened. Maybe there's some evil that's about to befall human beings. There's an evil that's about to befall those upon earth. 
or maybe their Lord wants something good for them, we have no idea. And then they say, And then they say, from us are those who are righteous and pious, and those who have taken an opposite direction. Indeed, we are of different ways. We are of different paths. And from this we learn something else. Two weeks ago on this very member, I talked about Surah Hujurat that talks about how we should deal with amongst ourselves in the community. Look at these jinns. They are not even exposing the crimes of their own criminals. They're not even saying, they say, They say, from us are those who are righteous and pious, and those who are not like this. Indeed, we are of many differing ways. SubhanAllah. They, are, they have this thing in their hearts, and we're not going to expose the evils of our brothers and sisters. Think about this, O Muslims. Someone does a crime in our community, and then we're the first to publicize that. We're the first to gossip about this person. We're the first to blacklist such a person and hear something to learn from these genes. That there are evil people amongst them and they're not going on a whole tirade and a rant saying that from us is the one who, uh, who commits murder, from us is the one who does this and that. No, from us are those who are righteous and those who are, who've taken a different path. And then they say, that indeed we are of differing ways. And from this we also learn that now the righteous and the unrighteous jinns, since the sky, skies are shut off, they're all on earth now. They're all on earth. So now they're wondering what is going on, and they all reach one realization. The kafir, the evil, and the righteous, and the pious jinns, they all reach one realization. And that realization was, they reach this realization that no one, none of us can ever overpower Allah. None of us can ever overcome the plan of Allah. Whether on this earth, neither can we escape in the air, neither can we escape by flight. They have completely understood this. SubhanAllah, how many of us, O oh brothers and sisters, how many of us think about these things of taqwa of Allah? SubhanAllah, this is taqwa coming out from those jinns who heard the Qur'an once. And yet for us, what's our relationship with the Book of Allah? That we're happily, we are able to commit the sins and the crimes that we want to, not even caring about that Allah is watching us. These jinns reach their, that realization. But the question, dear brothers and sisters, still remains, why is it that the skies were off limits? Why is it there is heavy security in the skies? Why is it that there are now these air missiles launched at them, at these jinns from hearing? Why is it when they are passing by the Prophet وسلم, immediately it clicked? Immediately, this is the reason. The Qur'an was coming down. The Qur'an was coming down, that's why when you have a very special delivery, when you have a delivery that is very confidential, what happens? You make sure you give it to the best courier, the best service that will keep it safe and secure. The Qur'an was coming down. And that is why verse 13 mentions this. That the, finally they say, وَأَنَّا لَمَّا سَمِعْنَا الْهُدَىٰ آمَنَّا بِهِ فَمَنْ يُؤْمِنُ بِرَبِّهِ فَلَا يَخَافُ بَخْصًا وَلَا رَحْقًا They say, and finally, when we heard, we heard, and now they're describing the Qur'an with yet another beautiful description. They're calling the Qur'an Huda. Immediately, they realize that this is Huda. They say, finally, when we saw this, we, we have believed in it. And the one who believes in Allah, he will never experience any bakhs nor rahaqa. What is bakhs and rahaqa? Bakhs means when a person causes a deficiency in the rewards that he is going to give someone. A deficiency. So they are already sure that whatever good we do, Allah is not going to let that go to waste. Allah is going to give us above and beyond this. That Allah will give us above and beyond what we have done right. And Allah will not cause any, def any bakhs, any deficiency. Wala rahaqa. Rahaqa means injustice that is done upon a per person who does something wrong. So they are acknowledging this. SubhanAllah, dear brothers and sisters, all of these realizations from those who were just 
a few moments ago they were non-Muslims, and then when they became Muslims, all of these things they understood and they realized, where are you and me? Where are we with regards to the Quran? We have to think about this and make a self-reflection. بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن الكريم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات وذكر الحكيم إنه تعالى جواب كريم ملك بر ورؤوف رحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم أنك حميد مجيد وبارك In conclusion dear brothers and sisters some of the points of benefit from this surah, from the, from the points of benefit that we can get from this profound experience, from this profound discussion that the jinns had amongst themselves is number one, their understanding of Tawheed, their understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the moment they had seen guidance, they had seen right from wrong, they embraced it. So when you and I see something that we may have been doing, whether cultural, whether something out of practice, whether something out of a habit, when we notice the truth from falsehood, we should immediately embrace that. That's number one. Number two, look at the husna one, billahi ta'ala, these jinns had. Look at the best thoughts they had. In verse number 10, they say, we do not know it whether any evil is intended for those on earth or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our master, Allah intends something good for these people. They, even in their speech, they all know, we all believe that good and bad is from Allah. But even in their speech, they are not saying that whether bad is coming from Allah, they say it in a passive voice. This is a balagha fa'ida from this verse. That even in their speech, they're saying they're negating Allah from even evil things. That they had husna fun. When evil touches me and you, when we go through any adversity or problems, do we start complaining about Allah? Why me? Doesn't Allah say I'm going through this and that? A'udhu billah, the jinns never did this. From this, we also notice the adab that these jinns had in listening to the Quran. When they heard the Quran, they gave it its full due. They listened to it completely. And don't think that the Fajr prayer of the Prophet ﷺ was just a 20 second first raka'ah, 10 second second raka'ah, and that's it. One minute salah is done, khalas, you go home. The Prophet's prayer was long and they completed listening to it. Dear brothers and sisters, we need to reconnect with the Book of Allah. If this is the attitude and the reaction that the non-Muslim jinns had, to the book of Allah, then what about we as human beings and as believers in this book, what should our attitude be to this book? Something to think about. Start with reading your best surah. Look at a translation, your favorite surah. Look at the translation, give it five minutes. Doesn't this book deserve five minutes of your time? Give it five minutes every day of your time. Then from that increase even further. The founders of this institute, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them. They have hundreds if not thousands of hours of lectures online, log online. This will be the next level. After you're giving more time to the book of Allah, you read the translation, you want to increase your knowledge one notch up, log on, log to, uh, onto the website and download lectures of tafsir. Listen and gain a deeper knowledge of this book. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who appreciate the book of Allah and that he makes us from those who love his book and act upon his book. Ibadullah yarhamukumullah inna Allah ya'mur bil adl wal ihsani wa ita'i dhal qurba wa lanha min fahshai wal munkari wal badhi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadabkaroon udhkurullah dhikran kathiran wa sabbihu bukratan wa asila wa ladhikurullahi akbar wa allahu ya'lumu ma tasla'oon. Aqim as-salam.